Hello and welcome to Hank Games Without Hank. My name is John Green. I'm the manager of the AFC Wimbledon Wimbly Womblies who find themselves in Europe, specifically in St. Petersburg, Russia, uh, where today, I think, I think, wait, does Zenit play in St. Petersburg? Nobody knows for sure. Um, but anyway, I think that's St. Petersburg in the background. Congratulations to the AFC Wimbledon Wimbly Womblies. Just a few years ago, we were toiling away in the Combined Counties League, and look at us now, traveling through Eastern Europe. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. R uh, other John Green's excited for EuroLeague action. So is bald John Green. They're starting today. Uh, today's topic comes from a Project for Awesome donor named Rachel, a 16-year-old nerd fighter from Toronto, Canada. Thank you for donating to the Project for Awesome, Rachel. Rachel wanted to talk about uh, two things. First, uh, she was interested in, in uh, she wanted to talk about, um, she suffers f uh, from some rare uh, diseases and tries and talked about how, like, difficult it is not to let suffering define your life when you're in uh, chronic pain or, or living with um, disability. As you can see, by the way, AFC Wimbledon second in our four-team division. Zenit is first, so this is a very important game to us. we got to finish in that top two if we want to move on to the knockout rounds, which would be nice. Again, this is going to be a difficult game. They've got Hulk up front, the actual Hulk. Uh, and we just have John Green and John Green. Mose Vestergaard starting out on the wing, as well as Frankenstein, who, um, despite his strength and um, brutishness, is in fact a physician, not a monster. Um, I think. I, I, well, so so first off, I mean, to that first topic, like I just, I, I do think that, um, you know, th this is something that Hank talks about very movingly because Hank deals with lives with chronic pain um, and um, and. Uh, you know, pretty serious chronic chronic illness and, uh, uh, you know, ulcerative colitis that, that has never really gone into remission or found its way toward, you know, total manageability. And, you know, Hank, um, I don't know, Hank, is, Hank s s has always really impressed me with the way that he can talk to people who are living with, uh, living with pain or, um, or uh, disability, um, just... Uh, no, that was not a foul. I'm sorry. Just talk to them empathetically without making judgments or giving uh, giving advice. I don't know. One of the most I think one of the most frustrating things actually is like being uh, having a billion people tell you how to solve your problem. Um, well, that was a foul. That was dirty. Can't believe he's not going to be carded for that. Typical, typical of these Eastern European referees. I don't like to make judgments, but come on. Um, so um, yeah. But uh, the other thing that Rachel wanted me to talk about was economic inequality. I've actually talked about that in a previous uh, uh, video for uh, the Wimbly Wombly's. But I do think it's, I think it's a really, oh, oh, a little bit offside. I think it's really, really important to talk about economic inequality, um, not just in the, the in industrialized world, but also in the developing world. Because a lot of times you see these statistics about uh, GDP growth and stuff uh, in the developing world, and, and it looks like life is, is getting better, but if the, um, if the growth is not shared, um, then it, it's not ultimately very meaningful. Like, if people who, uh, if, 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 you know, if, the, if there is not, like, for lack of a better term, a growing middle class, then um, not much is being accomplished. You know who is it? Oh, my God, ball John Green alone with the keeper. And it's a great save from the Zenit keeper. Oh, my goodness gracious. Look at this. He had to finish, and he didn't. You know what the real hero does there, Meredith? Passes to his husband for an empty netter. That's what he should have done, but he made a different choice. And then Les Moore with a poor corner kick, grabbed by the keeper, and life is full of disappointment. So, um, yeah, like, for example, Nigeria is one of the fastest-growing economies in the world, but uh, in much of Nigeria, the... Um, per capita GDP um, for people living in like the, you know, the bottom 40% of income is actually going down. Um, and, uh, and, and poverty levels are, are going up in some cases. So uh, I think overall in Nigeria, poverty is still, still declining, but, um, but that's definitely a concern. And it's, it's a, um, and it's also a huge concern, I think, in, in the United States. That guy just dove. He literally dove. Look at him. Look, look at this dive. Terribly refereed game. That guy, he just fell on the ground. This is, this is ridiculousness. Come on. Block the shot. Nerds! Off the post. Oh, and then we passed it out of the box just like we like to. And then off the post again. Then we're going to pass it out of the box again because that's who we are as a club. That's, the, that's what defines us is our ability to pass out of the back 
Oh, and then defeat our opponents. Look at Callum Kennedy jumping over the bad guys. Oh, then he gets dispossessed. All right, so they've hit the post twice. Uh, we've been one-on-one -on -one with the keeper once. It's just a very exciting game. Um, so, I, like, we, we, you know, you often see that, like, news stories or statistics or whatever about how economic inequality is increasing in the United States and in, in much of the world. Um, and it definitely is. But then I, I think a lot of times where people, or at least where I feel the disconnect, is in like, well, what does that mean contextually? Like, I understand that like now, like the 0.1% richest people control, you know, like 40% of American wealth or whatever, or 60% of American wealth, whatever it is, it's something ridiculous. But like, what does that actually m mean? Um, and like, why is that bad? Because uh, it's, it, I, I mean, one, one thing you could say is, well, you know, life has, oh God, who? Oh no, just kidding, that went in the net. I thought that we'd escaped. I was about to say um, everything worked out better than expected, but in fact, everything worked out horribly. Oh, now he's dancing, this is awkward. He's a gigantic man, Hulk. Well, it was a nice goal by Hulk. Oh God, this is very bad. This is very bad indeed. Okay, I guess they can only hit the post so many times before the magic happens. Let's, let's, let's just put together some nice passes and try to make some dreams come true for our club and our... F no, what are you doing, Ball John Green? That was a pass to you, big man. That was for you. That was not for some... That was a weird step over. It was a weird moment to walk away from the ball. Oh, golly gee. Um, so here's what I... Th here's, I guess... Here's... You know, I, I guess what, what some people say and what I, what I sometimes read is that, like, the lives of everyone is getting better. So why does it matter if, if rich people are getting richer and income inequality is, decre is increasing if, like, everyone's life is better? Oh! Oh, off the post! This game this is a very posty game! Ball John Green! Oh, he's tackled in the box! It's a penalty! It's a definite penalty! Oh my god, this game has had like 17 minutes of stoppage time, 17 post hits, and now it's a penalty because Ball John Green taken down with a complete lack of character by that man with a beard, and now it's Ball John Green. He's terrible at taking penalties. I don't know why he's our designated penalty taker. He might be the worst penalty taker of the entire game. Um, can we go to team management, please? Thank you. Uh, and then, if I'd like to go to player roles, yes. And I'd like to decide a penalty taker. Um, um, is there any way that I can find out if somebody's good at penalties or not? Um, uh, Frankenstein. It's going to be Frankenstein. We don't have anybody who's very good at penalties, but Frankenstein's going to give it a go. Okay, see, the, at least the bar is going slower here. Oh, that's a pretty great penalty by Frankenstein. Yeah! He did the mash. He did the monster mash. Just kidding. He's a physician. Frankenstein, he's a doctor who made a monster, not the monster itself. It was a beautiful goal. Oh, and it was courageous. Look at that. Right in the, right in the corner. And he just, oh, the keeper, he's stunned. He can't even move. He's humiliated. Um, right. So, like, it is accurate. I, I, I think, like, in defense, of, uh, in defense of, of wealth inequality or supply-side trickle-down e economics or whatever, like, it is, uh, it is accurate that, like, uh, the lives of, oh, God, when is it going to be halftime? This is ridiculous. Am I alone in feeling that the first half has lasted 10,000 years? All right, it's over. Um, uh, it is accurate to say that, like, uh, you know, the number of Americans who can afford a refrigerator has gone up in the last 30 years. The number of Americans, percentage-wise, who are in, uh, you know, who have a car, access to um, personal transportation has gone up. But, like, um, uh, not much. That's the issue. Is, is the, the, the wages being as stagnant as they are, like relative to inflation, or, or arguably having even maybe gone, you know, kind of gone down a little bit um, in the last 
especially since the recession in, in, in 2008, but even in the last, like, uh, you know, the kind of 10 years before that, well, wages have been pretty stagnant for a long time. But, but like, the, 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 this big period of, of growth that, that has been enjoyed primarily by, by wealthy people is, I think, bad for everyone. It's, I mean, it's obviously bad for people um, who have not enjoyed any part of that prosperity. But I think it's also in the long run, like, bad for the country. It's bad for the country not to have an educated population. It's bad for the country not to be investing in, you know, not, not to be able to, uh, like, it, it, limits, it limits economic growth. The real, you know, the sort of, like, macroeconomic argument, I think, I'm, and listen, I'm obviously not an economist, I'm not an expert, I'm not, you know, I'm just a guy who, like, reads the newspaper. So bear that in mind. But, like, to me, the Mac, oh, God. Oh, panic! Panic! Everything worked out better than expected! Woo! Whew! Boy, almost an own goal there. It's my favorite kind of goal, but not when we, not when we scored on ourselves. Zenit St. Petersburg playing like a man possessed! Who was that? Was that Seb Brown who made that beautiful save? Meredith? I ever told you about the time that Seb Brown saved two penalties against Luton Town in 2011 to send AFC Wimbledon into the Football League, and that without those two penalty saves, right now we wouldn't even be playing FIFA. I'd be doing something else with my time, something worse. Um, yeah, so my macroeconomic argument against it is that it decreases growth, and also that like having wealth in the hands of very few people is like politically bad. Like I think it's bad for democracy. It's bad for like the quality of public conversation because wealthy people have are, are too involved. It's bad. I think it's bad for like charity in the end to have very few wealthy people kind of deciding where the majority of the philanthropic um, efforts of the United States citizens go to. I was fouled from behind and that's a red card, but instead you're not going to give them a foul at all and you, I don't want to take a er, quick free kick. Thank you. Yes, I would be content with a draw in this game. Um, you know, like, there's just, uh, it's, I, I just, I, I think, like, that kind of, it's, it's it not terribly conducive to democracy, um, as we know, because we've had extremely concentrated wealth in the past in the United States, um, in early American history, and, and we, it wasn't a particularly democratic time in American history. And I think, um, you know, having everyone involved politically and economically, um, having more, a, a larger percentage of your citizens being able to participate in political and economic life being to, to live oh god did that go in or not it did not yay number 99 number 85 in st petersburg they've got completely different numbers to the our numbers here in the un, in the united kingdom we're going to make some substitutions as well it seemed to uh, they gave me the idea and i think it's a good one Moe's vestergaard he's exhausted he's only 12 i i work him very hard k st luce is going to come on um, and then we've got a decision to make. Do we replace the John Greens and try to go hard up front, or do we go with some central midfielders like the Golden Child and maybe put Dicko out on the wing? That's a good question, and I don't have an easy answer, but I think the answer is, is in the end, it's going to be Dicko and Dini. I just think, like, let's give ourselves a, a chance to win, and Dicko and Dini are the guys who can win this game. Uh, you know, they're big, they're strong, uh, they're not tired. And I think we got to try to win this game. Like, this is an important game. Mose Vestergaard, mostly for your haircut, but partly due to your fatigue, you are coming off of the field. Um, I, know, I, I know you're not happy about it, but you're tired. And you've got that little, like, chin strap thing. I never liked that. Meredith, don't you feel that if you're going to have a goatee, you should also have the mustache? You just go all the way, right? Yeah. I mean, well, it, you know, listen, I'm not totally in favor of either. But if you're going to, you know. You're going to have a hard time winning me over. So I just think, like, uh, in the end, for me, it's, 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 a, it's a big, big problem uh, to be excluding the vast majority of people who live in your country from, like, the full economic and social, like, uh, political life of that country. Um, and that's kind of the situation in which we find ourselves, like, very few people... Um, do most of the funding for political campaigns. Uh, relatively few people, uh, you know, make most of the, most of the, there's still a lot of, actually, because we're a relatively charitable nation, the United States, there's still quite a lot of um, uh, donations coming from uh, sort of non, non-rich people. But I worry that even, th that, e that even that will increase and that, that, you know, that shapes the cultural conversation about what's important, you know, like is, is, curing malaria important or is supporting the opera important and like 
I don't want I don't want rich people to have undue influence in that conversation either. Okay, it's Frankenstein. Frankenstein with a nice looking cross. Oh, it took too long to get there. Oh, no! Is he? He's, wow! Is he? It wasn't. It wasn't offside. He was a little offside. It was just you gotta rush back in that situation, Dicko. Oh man, we almost went one nil down to two one up. We really need to. Uh, I would really like to win this game, and I feel I suddenly feel like it's possible. Don't you guys? I feel like I feel like the dream is on. Oh, that's a really nice ball to Frankenstein, and then it's a nice one timer. Oh, and we did win the game. We did win the game. It's D one nil down to two one up. That's the way we're going to win the cup. We were 1-0 down. We just won 2-1. That's how we're going to get it done. Oh, Deanie has a beautiful goal. 1-0 down to 2-1 up, guys. That's how we're going to win the cup. Wow. Deanie. Been thinking of a song for Houdini. It was, uh, do you believe in magic? Houdini does he scored a goal and then he got real drunk i don't know i've been i i'm not quite there yet but i'm i'm working on something for houdini um oh god oh god the one thing we can't do is give up a goal here in the last minute guys everybody focus everybody focus please come on everybody back in defense yes now we pass it out of the back that's what we do is the wimbly wombly is that the end of the game yes we did it with goals from Frankenstein and Houdini. We come back from 1-0 down. We win 2-1. That reminds me that uh, we can do something. The last thing I wanted to say is that we can do something about uh, income inequality. It isn't inevitable. We've done things about it in the past in American history. Someday I'll make a blog this video about this because it's of great interest to me, but I, still, I don't really know that much yet. So I'm still doing, I'm still trying to like read. All right now I'm reading lots of uh, economic history. This is boring. You guys don't care about this. We won the game! Yes! Thank you for watching. Best wishes.